season. No, I'm not about to run, bro. I'm warming up for one, bro. Mama, mama.
welcome to Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church. For our pastors, Brother Nathaniel Harris, we are located on the corner of Harris, Reverend Harris Street and Left. I need your help tonight. Let's join in together, worship God together. Amen. I heard this song. And it was so profound. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Thank you for taking care of my family. Thank you for taking care of my household. Thank you for taking care of my needs. Word. 
it sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name I know. Come on, everybody. Oh, how I love. Oh, how I Sometimes you got to obey the Spirit. Amen. 
to God be the glory for all that he's done for us right here in Macedonia. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise as our pastor comes. Father, we thank you that you've given unto us another opportunity to recognize what a wonder you really are in our soul. What a blessedness, what a joy divine, Lord, as we lean and depend upon you. You are that I am God. You are that Alpha and Omega. You are that strength, Lord, of our lives. You are that hope that is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. Lord, we'll trust you. We'll hold on to your unchanging hand. Where can we go and you not be there with us, Lord? David said, if we ascend into the highest mountain, Lord, thou art there into the lowest valley of our lives. Thou art there, Lord. Thank you for being there, Lord. Thank you for the joy of our salvation. Yes, you are, Lord. Yes, you are. So we praise and glorify you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, yes. we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen, amen. There is a portion of scripture that's coming from Psalms 90, 69. There you find these words. Save me. Oh God, for the waters are come in unto my soul. I sink in deep mire where there is no standing. I am come into the, the deep waters where the flood overflow me. I am weary of my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for my God. O oh God, thou knoweth my foolishness, and my sins are not hid from thee. There is a word that comes that says, Guide me, O oh, thy great Jehovah. As we pilgrim through this barren land, thou art, we, we are weak, but thou art mighty. Hold us, somebody say hold us, Lord, in thy mighty hand. In the name of Jesus, we pray. You may have a seat. Amen, amen, amen. These words coming from Psalm 69. Paul, Paul, David is dealing with facing desperate situations. During our time on this earth, we all encounter trials and tests. James, in James 1 and 2, even warns us that we will fall into divers temptation and many different kinds of trials will come in our direction. A variety of things causes our advers adversities and our affliction. Satan oftentimes stir up things within our lives that we are seen unable to overcome. There are also those natural consequences of living in a sin-cursed word. And at times we cause ourselves to have troubles and difficulties. 
Say amen, somebody. Amen. At times we cause our own troubles in our lives. There are some difficulties that are a direct result of our unwise decisions for sinful deeds and our foolish behavior. David had experienced this, and yet David was an instrument of God's work and God's will within his life. David recognized his shortcomings, and he continued to hold on to God's unchanging hands. Why? Because the scripture gives us promises after promise after promise that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. He'll be our strength and that living eternal power within our lives. This is when our, we face those death, desperate situations in the power of God. David said these words unto us, cry out for God to save us and deliver us. Confess our foolishness and our sinful behavior and God will, somebody say God will, answer our prayers. He said, recognize that you are suffering sometimes because of your faith and belief in Christ in that same 69th chapter. He says, cast yourself on God's mercy and his unfailing love. Keep on praying and never give up. For God is, somebody say God is, a prayer answering God. David says oftentimes the solution that we look for within our lives, he says, ask God to redeem us from the wrong that we've done. He says, praise God's name because he responds to our cries. David was trapped in a helpless situation that was destroying him from the inside out. Well, David is not only dealing with his issues, but he shares with us, and only God knows how many of us are in the same kinds of situations. David says in the 69th chapter, he says, Hear me, O Lord, for thy loving kindness is good. Somebody say good. It is good unto us. He says, turn unto me according to the multitude of thy mercy, thy tender mercies. Oh, we recognize that in these portions of scripture, David is able to advise us who are living in this life that somewhere down the line we will be faced with trial and tribulation. He says, God's mercy, somebody say mercy in here, reaches downward unto us, all right? He says this in Psalms 103 and verse 11. He says, for as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. God's mercy, I say, reaches upward beyond man's outer space and no high, not as high as we can go. The rich and the proud are included. God reaches out with his mercy, no matter what our title or position may be. Presidents have realized the mercy of God. Kings have fallen down on their knees before the true and living God, all right? Yeah, yeah. There are always those, even generals of soldiers, are cried out unto the Lord. All those who humble themselves and accept Christ as their Savior, amen, may recognize that God is always there. The God I serve is a forgiving God. The God I serve is a loving God. The God I serve is a God 
that will never fail. The scripture in Psalms 136 and verse 26 says us that we need to admonish God for all that he done. He says, oh, give thanks unto the God of heaven. He's that high. He's always sitting high and looking low for his mercy endureth forever. No matter what your trial may be, God's mercy is always available. That's why we call upon his name. Not only is God's mercy reaching upward, but God's mercy reaches downward to even the lowest valley. Amen. Psalms 136 and 23 says, Who remember us in our lowest states, for his mercy endureth forever. God's mercy is great and good. It reaches downward to the discouragements that come into our lives. God's mercy reaches downward to the distress that we sometimes experience within our lives. God's mercy even is there for those who are living in depression. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. God's mercy accept all who forsake their sins and with simple, simple faith trust in the name of the Lord. God's mercy, mercy reaches up to the proud and the haughty and down to the lowest, setting them on the same level when they are able to come one unto Christ Jesus. Christ says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. Who wouldn't trust a God who looks down upon us and see our needs? Our needs are great. Our wants are plentiful, but God is able, I tell you. He is able. God's mercy reaches inward unto all of those. Psalms 119, verse 76 and 77 says, Let, I pray thee, thy merciful kindness be for my comfort. Let thy tender mercy come unto me. God's tender mercy reaches inward to the heart, inward to the mind, inward into the soul, and brings comfort and contentment unto those that are not trusting in their own ways, but trusting in the name of the Lord. God's mercy fills us with compassion and love that no other person can give unto us. It cheers our behavior and it removes loneliness and it heals our broken hearts. Somebody say thank you, Lord. God's tender mercy reaches in what? Exchanging our sorrow for his joy. This joy that I have. I know somebody have heard of that. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. The joy of my salvation is an inward work of God within my heart. God's tender mercy reaches inward. It's changing. His stability replaces our frustrations and changes our disappointments of his appointment, for his appointment. For as he has recognized for each and every one of us those individual characteristics that are in our lives. Your character is not my character. My character is not yours. But God knows each and every one of our hearts and our needs. And he has mercy upon us. Somebody say, have mercy, Lord. 
If you think that you're in a position where you don't need the Lord's mercy, you are destitute to fail in your way. God reaches not only upward unto us, he reaches downward to us, he reaches inward to us, and God's mercy reaches outward for us. He says these words, the earth, O Lord, is full of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes. Somebody say, teach me, Lord. Before we get so caught up in our own self, before we think that we are more than what we are, we need to be taught by the name of the Lord. Teach me, Lord, that I will hear that admonishment unto me and that thou would help me, Lord, that I will come overcome the ways and the evilness that leads me into the darkness of this. Teach me. You are Lord. That as I live in this earth, on this earth, Lord, we can recognize that the earth is full. Somebody say full in here. Of thy mercy. Teach me thy statutes, Lord. Your will and not my will. Your way and not my way. All who are willing to repent of no matter what your sin is and believe in Christ may be saved at all times from all circumstances in all situations. We give thanks unto God unto the God of our salvation for his mercy endureth forever. Cry out unto him. Cries are, are, are dealing with the issues that sometimes trouble in our life. Trouble in my life? I have to cry out sometimes. Help me, Lord, to cry to the one that's able to move on my back. Help me to recognize, Lord, that you are that I am God. You are the beginning and the end, Lord. All things remain within you. When I am overwhelmed by the adversities, David described himself as, as a drowning man. He had been cast into such a deep water of affliction that he questioned whether he would survive or not. His difficulties were intense by the discouragement that had set into his troubled soul. He was struck in a thick miry Amen. And the flood waters of destitute were rapidly overtaking him. Desperately, he feared that he would sink to the deep and dark dungeon of depression, that he would never escape. David struggled for a foothold, but yet he couldn't find a hole to stand on. All right? So he turned to the only one who could move on his behalf. Help me, Lord. When I'm drowning and cannot find, seem to find ground to stand on, thou art the God of a firm foundation. Thou art the rock that's better, better than the rocks of this earth, Lord. Move on my behalf. Touch me, Lord, that I'll never forget what you've done for me. Touch me, Lord, when trouble is all around me, when I've caused my own self misery, Lord, you know. Thank God for your compassion and love. David was totally exhausted by the worsening of his situation. 
He had cried out to God for help until his throat was parched and he could cry no more. He waited and waited for God to answer his desperate cry. Somebody say, they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew thy strength. You shall mount up with wings of eagles. You shall walk and not get weary. You shall run and not faint. They that wait upon the Lord, they may say, wait on the Lord. When trouble is all around, you wait on the Lord. When it seems like there is no answer for your life, wait on the Lord. He waited. He waited for God to answer his desperate cries, but no answer came. He described his futile pursuit of God in physical terms. He had looked for God so long that his vision had failed him. With his strength completely spent, he felt that he could go on no longer. When we are faced with overwhelming adversities, we need to cry out to God for help. Somebody say, help me, Lord. Whether you've never experienced it in your life, that old dreadful day will come when you will need to know and understand the love and forgiveness of God. Somebody say, wait on it. Oftentimes, we are too slow to reach out to God. We try to handle our situation and our matters in our, with our own hands, and we try to rely on our own resources. Only after exalting our resources and ourselves do we turn to God and cast our burdens upon him. Any number of challenges can cause us to feel as if we are sinking like David. But like David, we must learn to call on the Lord and to believe the great promises of his holy word. Luke says in Luke 18 and 7, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? That's the God that we serve, all right? He bears our burdens. He understands our shortcomings. And yet he has compassion upon us, Dr. Luke says unto us. John says these words in John 16 and 23. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever shall ask the Father in my name, he shall give it. All right, call on the name of the Lord. Can't you picture Jesus in that garden of Gethsemane, crying out to God with heaviness that is like blood within his veins falling down upon him, and yet he called on the name of the Lord. And he concluded, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. We are reminded that the prayers of faith shall save those who are sick. The prayers of faith shall raise up those, amen, who are afflicted. The prayers of faith will bless and bring about God's forgiveness for our sins and trespasses. They shall be forgiven, James says unto us in James 5 and 15. These words come fresh to us from Jeremiah. Call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 
Amen. David says in that Psalm 91 and 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Thank you, Lord, for your word of promise unto us, Lord. Yes, yes. Isaiah said unto us, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Isn't it good to save a God that can hear your faintest cry? Isn't it good to save a God that will answer you by and wait on the Lord? Why? Because God knows our sins. And our guilt. You may hide it from the world, but God knows our ever shortcoming. God knew David's shortcoming. A king full of capable, foolish behavior. God knew, amen, that David, like all of us, had prone, was prone unto sin. He did not always act wisely, nor did he always obey the God's law. But he was wise enough to know that he could not hide his sin from God. If you are guilty of some trespasses that have caused him to to, to turn away from God, amen, hence it would be useless for David to claim that he's innocent when God knows that he's guilty, all right? Because David would not want to be a stumbling block to anyone else, and we should recognize that within ourselves. David knew that the people believe everything they hear without discerning whether or not it was true or not, all right? With this in his mind, he was greatly concerned that the accusations against him might be a stumbling block to somebody else. Moreover, he feared that his situation might bring reproach on those who genuinely followed after the Lord. So he prayed earnestly. All right? That those who wait on the hope of God would not be ashamed because of him. And he also prayed that those who seek the Lord would not be confounded, that they would not be embarrassed, humiliated, and disgraced. We recognize and realize the simple truth sometimes that it causes our own problems upon us. Sometimes our trouble is the results of our own sinfulness and unwise behavior. The difficulties we then face may be due to God's discipline because of our sins. Occasionally our conflicts with others are rooted in something we've said or done. Oftentimes we realize or do it intentionally, amen, to hurt one another. Oh, but thanks be to God. God is always aware of everything we say and do. We can't hide our sin from him. Therefore, we pray for him to help us. We must confess our foolishness and sinful behavior to him and our fellow man. In addition, we should ask him to thoroughly search our heart. David says, search my heart, Lord, for you know all things. Move on my heart, Lord, that I would repent and come back to you. Have mercy, Lord. Because mercy suits my case. I'm not strong enough to be nothing else but a servant serving you, Lord. Help me, Lord. I suffer 
because of my shortcomings. Depression because of the bondage that I placed myself in. David said that he begged the Lord to rescue him from the death of anguish and despair. He prayed the Lord that he would keep him from being dis completely swallowed up in distress. We need to pray that God will answer out of the goodness of his love and of his mercy. As David cried out to God, he found that footstool in the midst of the pit of Mara, which he was sinking in. He found that help in God that was being poured out upon him. Loving kindness is God's unfailing, steadfast love. It is often translated into mercy. And in God Almighty, his attributes, his qualities, is that he revealed to us his character. He's a forgiver. All right? He's compassionate. He knows our coming in and our going out. He knows where we are standing. Standing on the promises of God's unfailing love and unlimited capacity, compassion. David boldly called on the Lord to no one else but God, all right? No longer did he have to hide his face from him. He prayed that God would answer him quickly for he was sinking deeper and deeper in the press. With everything passing day by day, we think of Jesus and his persistent prayer on behalf of those who had sinned against him. Jesus taught us to be persistent in our prayers, to never grow discouraged or quit praying, all right? Pray in the morning time. Pray in the noonday. Pray in the midnight hour at all time be prayerful before God all right we need to stand on God promises when we do not receive an immediate answer for our prayers just as David do, did pray on somebody say pray on pray for God's unfailing love Pray for God's unconditional forgiveness. Pray for God for his motivating force that they that wait upon him shall renew their strength. Luke says that Jesus shared with him that men ought always to pray and not faint. The word of God in Luke says these words, and I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, <laughs> and ye shall find not, and the door shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks it, receive it, and he that seeketh will find it. Be rest assured that when you pour your heart out to God, he will never fail you. If he then be evil, know how to give good to gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Have you asked him today? Have you called upon him today? He says, confess your faults, not just to him, but to one another, and pray one for another that ye may be healed. For the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are you praying? Are you praying? David also in that 69th chapter, in that 30th through the 36th verse, he looked ahead to the day that God gave him victory over his troubles and tribulation. David saw 
the problem by praising God, holy name. Instead of vowing to offer God, vowing to offer outside thanksgiving, God touched his heart and David decided that he would give God a sacrificial praise. A sacrificial praise is lips giving thanks to his name. Oh, what a name. His name is above all names. His name is greater than any king of king and lord of lords. His name is the solution to all of our needs. His name, some say, is Alpha, the beginning of our existence. Omega, the one that's there when all else fell before you. David had a broken heart. And yet, because of his praise of God, he was given another opportunity. <laughs> Revived him because he could see that the Lord was willing to hear his cry. God will do the same for you just as he's done for me. God will keep you just as he's done for me. Isn't that a good news today? That's why I could praise him. I can praise him with all of my heart. I can praise him with all of my soul. I can pour my heart out to the Lord. For he will. He will. Somebody say he will. Yes, a prayer. Praise him of the heavenly host. Praise him on the earth where we live. Praise him on the sea that flow where the billows roll. Praise him, every living being. Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. For the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So we seek to get it right with God and get right with him now that all things are for the sake and the abundance of God's grace. All right? Giving thanks always for all things unto the mighty God that we serve. And the Father in the name of Jesus Christ will he guarantees it, church. He will. May not come when you want it, but he's always, he's always on time. We open the doors of the church because if there's someone here who recognizes that you are in need of God's help, you're in need of God's blessings. You are in need of God's passion. You are in need of God's loving kindness. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man will open the door, I will come in. We declare he won't pass you by. That's good news. Say, Lord, say. personal savior. Maybe you're out in Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, or wherever. God is there. He can come. He can open up your heart. He can give you what you need. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Call his name. Savior. Come on.
you call on him, he won't pass you by here. God bless you. Pray bow with me in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your word. But more, we thank you for your promises unto us, Lord. That if we would call on you, you will not fail us, Lord. You will not turn a deaf ear unto us, Lord. So we praise and glorify you for the joy of our salvation. Lord, who wouldn't trust a God that's so loving and forgiving? Died us, oh, thy great Jehovah, as we lean and depend on you. These and many blessings we believe in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let the church say amen, amen, amen. Let's be at the throne yes, Lord. of mercy. Oh, Lord, find, find a sweet Oh, oh, oh.